חברים, אנחנו נמצאים עכשיו באירוע גאלה של הקהילה הנוצרית האוונגליסטית כאן בקנדה. אירוע שכולו מוקדש בעצם לכבודו של ראש ממשלת קנדה לשעבר סטיבן הרפר. האירוע שאנחנו נמצאים בו עכשיו הוא גם בנוכחותו של שגריר ישראל באו"ם בניו יורק, גלעד ארדן שהגיע לכאן. Today, sadly, colleges have become a breeding ground for hatred, intolerance and anti-Semitism. רק לסבר את האוזן, כל שולחן כאן מוערך בסביבות בין עשרת אלפים לעשרים וחמש אלף דולר של תרומה לשולחן. כמובן, המכובדים הגיעו כמכובדים. יש כאן תורמים רבים שתורמים לקהילה היהודית ובעיקר תורמים לישראל. interfaith solidarity with the state of Israel. This is a growing phenomenon in the world, as you have heard, Christians and Jews coming together in an unprecedented matter to, manner to turn their biblical support into meaningful political action. Woo! Right here, right now. Now let me just say, I just want to say a few words about the cause that we share. Obviously, I understand your passion for Israel and the reasons for that support. And I'm honored that you are recognizing my strong support and the government I led our strong support for the state of Israel. Yet at the same time, as many of you will recall, as Prime Minister, as Prime Minister, I did not base my support, my public support, on any particular biblical interpretation because I needed to speak to people beyond our faith communities. Now, this does not mean that in any way I don't think that supporting Israel is anything but the right thing to do. And I believe that, in fact, from childhood. It's a view I inherited from my late father, Joe Harper. He was a strong supporter of the Jewish people, and he was a vocal opponent of anti-Semitism back in an era where anti-Semitic views were public and widespread in Canada, and very open. He would often remark, But he told me from the time I was a child, he would often say that no group of people for their size have contributed so much to so many fields of human, human endeavor as the Jewish people. Why then, he would say, should they not be entitled to live in peace and security in their own homeland? Here, here. But friends, The reason I gave to Canadians at large for supporting the State of Israel was this. Simply because it is in the national interest of our country, Canada, to do so. Now friends, you will recall that the foreign policy of the government I led was marked by outsized support, that's the term I will use, outsized, outsized support, for two particular countries in the world. Israel and Ukraine. That, em that emphasis, friends, that was not by accident. My government recognized fundamental truths about good foreign policy. First, in a dangerous world, peace is not achieved through apology or trying to accommodate dangerous actors. Peace is achieved through strength and through deterrence. And second, just as a wise country stands up to its enemies, so too it stands by its friends. And so, our support for Israel and Ukraine is easily explained. Here were two great friends of Canada, two democratic nations, two dependable Western allies facing extraordinary threats to their existence. And friends, I can say without any nuance that if others in the world had understood these basic principles and had applied them in the case of Ukraine. If, for example, at any time between 1991 and February 23rd of this year, Ukraine had been admitted to NATO as many of us wanted, what is happening there today would not be happening. It's just that simple. And so the government I led took an unequivocal stand 
for Ukraine and against Vladimir Putin's Russia. And of course, for the same reasons, we took the, that we took the stand for Ukraine, we took a stand for Israel. And I put our stand this way. My government's recognition of Israel's right to exist was unconditional. Our support of Israel's right to self-defense was unequivocal and our refusal to single out Israel for censure was unwavering. And friends, I must add this. We took these positions not just in front of groups like this. In my experience, every politician, when he's speaking before a Jewish group or an evangelical group, is suddenly a friend of Israel. <laughs> we took these positions at the very moment when Israel was being most vocally condemned and abandoned by its supposed friends around the world. And friends, if that support for Israel was even more vociferous than our support for Ukraine, it is because the nature of the threats faced by Israel are even more dangerous for our country, Canada, than and for humanity as a whole. That is because the opposition to Israel always goes beyond mere geopolitics. It is inevitably rooted in something far more insidious. It is inevitably rooted in the perennial evil of anti-Semitism. My father, as I mentioned, grew up, he grew up in the 1930s, and he instilled in me a lesson of history. Those who begin by hating and threatening the Jewish people will inevitably hate and threaten all of us. This is because such people are animated by a unique contempt for human differences of all kinds. Whether those are differences in cult culture, faith, and race, or differences in class, occupation, and success, or anything else. Differences they see first in Jews, and invariably in many others. You can see that kind of hatred today, as the ambassador said, in the so-called BDS movement, the movement that calls for us to boycott, divest, and sanction the Jewish state. It's not, by the way, it's not, by the way, that Israel is perfect or beyond criticism. In fact, Israel's democracy makes criticism part of its natural life. If you want to hear criticism of Israel, go to Israel. You're going to hear it there. But the BDS movement applies standards of criticism to Israel that it fails to apply to any other state in the world. Therefore, make no mistake, its singling out of Israel is based on a unique hatred for Israel because Israel is, the, is unique as the only Jewish state. My son Ben, when he was in university, once showed me a sign that he got pulled off a wall from the BDS movement on his campus. You know what that sign was? A Star of David with a cross through. Mm. It could have been from Berlin in 1938. Now even more troubling internationally, is the hatred of Israel that comes from the jihadist movement of radical Islam, the force which has threatened Israel every single day of its seven-decade existence, and which, as 9-11 showed, and many other incidents have shown, today threatens all of us. And the difference between that threat that Israelis face and that we as Canadians face is really simple. That threat is much closer to Israel than it is to Canada, but it's still there. And friends, first and foremost, in terms of that threat, is, as the ambassador said, the theocratic dictatorship in Iran. It is a truly malevolent state that oppresses its own people, that funds terrorist proxies in its neighborhood, and of course has long been pursuing relentlessly nuclear weapons, the nuclear weapons program. Now these days, I spend most of my time on my business interests, Harper and Associates, its various clients and investments around the world, including in Israel itself. But I do still spend a little bit of time in politics, 
And in that vein, I am the non-executive chairman of an organization called the Friends of Israel Initiative. We are a small group, I think there's 28 or 29 of us, former high office holders internationally, all of us non-Jewish, who are dedicated to defending and promoting the state of Israel on the world stage. We have... Here, here. We have opposed and continue to oppose the so-called Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the JCPOA, otherwise known as the Iran Nuclear Deal. Friends, in our view, apocalyptic ayatollahs possessing, potentially possessing, nuclear weapons is simply too dangerous a prospect for the world to tolerate. And the JCPOA did not does not and will not prevent that from happening. Worse, the continuing efforts of the Biden administration to revive the deal is alienating not just Israel, but also our Arab allies in the Gulf. And it is alienating them at precisely the time when they are finally opening up, opening up relations with Israel, and precisely at the time when we need them to deal with the geopolitical and energy security challenges presented by Vladimir Putin's Russia. Friends, the West failed to stand up to Putin and to deter him. It tried instead to accommodate him, and we could see where that got us. Let us refuse to make that mistake with the extremists who run the government in Tehran. But let us do more than just stand up against Iran, against jihadist extremists, and against every variety of anti-Semite that walks the earth. Let us stand with Israel, because no nation is more deserving of our support. Friends, I tell people, I tell people that the modern state of Israel has been built in just three generations from almost nothing by the remnants of populations who had almost been annihilated. And in that time, it has become one of the most successful countries on earth. It is a literal oasis of freedom, democracy, pluralism, wealth, innovation, culture, and security in the most perennially troubled and dangerous part of the world. And friends, it is all of these things, while facing daily extraordinary dangers and security threats, and yet doing its utmost to maintain standards of justice and fair treatment for all, even for its enemies. Far more, by the way, than our populations would ever tolerate under similar cir circumstances. In short, I believe that today's Israel may be the most remarkable country ever created. And let me... Ooh, beautiful. And let me assure you of this. Whatever the le liberal media, the intellectuals, the BDS movement, whatever that whole crowd may say, there are millions of people in this country, not of our face or background, just as there are hundreds of millions of war around the world who join us in our admiration of what Israel has accomplished in, the, in its seven decades. So I want to thank, once again, the Israel Allies Foundation for the recognition you've bestowed on me, for the chance to be here and to share these thoughts with you. Please keep up the good work for that great country that we all so admire. God bless all of you in that work. God bless Israel. And God bless him. God bless Stephen Harper.